Hi everyone, and welcome to our weekly portion here at eTeacherGroup.com. This week's portion is Da'alotcha, and it can be found in the book of Numbers, from chapter 8, verse 1, to chapter 12, verse 16. Let us open the Torah scroll and meet our portion. Vaydaber Adonai el Moshe lemor, daber el Aaron v'amarta elav, Be'alotcha et hanerot el mul p'nei ha'menora ya'iru shivat hanerot. The portion is named Ba'alotcha, literally, when you set up, because it begins with a command to Aaron concerning what he must do when setting up the light in the desert tabernacle. Let us understand the first two verses together. Ve'edabir, and spoke, Adonai, God, El Moshe, unto Moses, Lemo, saying, Dabir, speak, El Aaron, unto Aaron, Ve'amarta, and say, Elav, to him. Be'alotcha, when you light, et hanerot, the lamps, el mul, in front of, p'nei ha the lampstand. Ya'iru, shall give light, shiv'at, the seven, hanerot, lamps. The portion begins with instructions of how the lampstand, built from seven lamps, is to be set up and how it is to be made. God then commands Moses as to how the Levites are to be purified in order to work in the tabernacle. We also learn that the age range for belonging to the Levite workforce is every male between the ages of 25 and 50. At this point, we learn that a full year has now passed since the Exodus. The Israelites are commanded to keep the Passover laws. Some of the Israelites are impure when the others celebrate the festival and cannot participate. These Israelites are commanded to celebrate the Passover one month later, and this is a rule for later generations also, if someone is traveling and therefore not able to participate. However, anyone who is pure and not traveling, who does not participate in the Passover at the right time, will be divinely punished. The tabernacle being completed, we now learn that the cloud of God covered the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the tent, the Israelites continued their traveling, and they made camp when the cloud returned and rested over the tabernacle. Moses is then commanded to make two silver trumpets in order to use them to summon the congregation. When only one trumpet is blown, only the leaders of the tribes are being summoned. The trumpets are also to be used for traveling, wars, and festivals. We then hear that the cloud lifted from over the tabernacle, and the Israelites left the Sinai desert, traveling in an orderly fashion according to the tribes and camps. Moses then turns to his father-in-law, Jethro, and asks him to come with the Israelites to the Promised Land. Jethro refuses, but Moses insists, saying that the people need his assistance. As often happens during the wanderings of the Israelites in the desert, the Israelites complain, saying that in Egypt they had all the plenty of Egypt, while now in the desert they have only manna to eat. They demand meat. Moses is furious, telling God that he has no way of supplying the people with meat. God then tells Moses to summon 70 of the elders of Israel in order for them to share his burden. God then commands Moses to tell the people that they will have meat on the next day for a month and there will be so much that they will loathe it. He then brings quails from the sea and the people eat it with great lust. God is angry at this lust and kills many of the people. At the end of the portion, we hear that Moses' siblings, Aaron and Miriam, spoke about Moses, talking about the fact that he married a Cushite woman. Miriam is punished with leprosy and quarantined for a week. The Israelites wait for her quarantine to end before they continue their travels. Thank you for joining us for this week's portion. We hope to see you again next week. Have a great week.